All right, guys, and welcome back to another exciting adventure with the Riotech Corporation. Today, I'm doing a spotlight on my man Mars's wonderful entry into the Fat Squatch Build-Off Contest that Fat Squatch Games sponsored. So today, I'm here with Mars. He's going to take us around his base and show it off to y'all. I hope you enjoy. Mars One, are you there? Ten four. All right, sir. It's all yours. Take us around. All right, welcome, Commander. And this is the base I entered for the um, Fat Sasquatch Base Contest you um, had on your t YouTube channel, and I'm here to give you a tour of it. So tell us a little bit about where we're standing at right now. All right, right now we are standing up at the top of the control tower um, with kind of a good, nice, good view over the base and showing some of the various buildings up this side over here. Um, but up here, we have the control tower with several um, seats for various people. We have the commander seat over here. We have an engineering console over here with some useful information on the wall showing um, status of ores, power time, and whatever else our engineer will need. We have flight control over here showing the status of docked ships on the various connectors, status of fuel for the base, hydrogen, oxygen, and uranium. Nice. And over here we have just an extra control seat for damage control. And I also added um, missing components, so what we're low on. Ah, that's nice. So pretty much the command tower is manned by what? About four to five people maximum uh, you know, through the entire time? Uh, yeah, can have up to four people up here. Maybe some visitors or guests if you need them. Um, ideally, you'll probably only have one person up here, depending on what you need. Um, unless you have a bunch of ships coming in or lots of activity going on. I got you. I see they've also got their own medical facility. Yes, they do. And that's uh, pretty well protected. It's not not going to get uh, damaged anyway. Uh, there's a layer of heavy armor above us um, with some defenses sitting on the station roof and a couple antennas, which can take quite a bit of damage. Um, however, that is not the only medical facility in this base. There is one over in the quarters and one all the way down in the basement of the control tower we are in, in the power room. I got you. I can't wait to see the rest of the base. So, so let's go ahead and head on down. All right. If you just follow me down these stairs, we're going to head on down through a... Down oh, yeah. To, I can't um, wait, guys. The next this level base, is awesome. which is a conference room and lounge. Um, so we got our nice couches here, projector for some board games. Thought about it all, huh? Board games. Yep. Well, you know, when you're in a lonely outpost on a mission far away from home, you got to have something to do. But if you come around um, over here, the central filter holding the elevator shaft and whatnot, we have the um, conference room. Oh, this is nice. Some nice wood tables. Nice view out this side, looking at the uh, mining dock over there, or one of our docks, or many ships. I and, got you. Yep, nice big right. old clock. Never know, never have to worry about what time it is. Not at all. Um, if you have any questions while we're going through, ask them at all can go over things will do but uh, right now we can leave level three and head on down to actually we're gonna not use the elevator at this time we're actually gonna take these stairs over here and go down to actually level 2l cryonics cryogenics guys all right so this is kind of where um so we got freeze-dried spacemen in this area, huh? 
Uh, you know, if you're on that 24-hour shift, shift and you need to get um, relieved or kind of don't want to have to spend too much time spending money down in the um, store at the lower level, you can kind of hop in a cryo chamber and just kind of wait the time away until your ship comes to pick you up. I got you. Um, really happy with how the um, attendance quarters came out. It's nice and small, compact, just the way it needs to be. Yep. But he's just here to make sure, help people going in and out of um, the cryopods. Ah! They just set up some scripts so it should tell you whether it's occupied when I hop in when the script, script refreshes. It did tell me that you were in, then did show that you jumped out. Alright, if we can continue on, we can head on out back to the stairs, head on down to the main level two. Alrighty. This level we have um, our major terminals. So where our large ships would dock. Um, if you're thinking kind of like a terminal for a large 747 or other large airplane of that nature. I got you. Looks like we have something docked outside right now. A pretty sure class that, Corvette. Yep, pretty sure that's Corvette class. And also on this level we have our contracts, so you can disembark pick up some contracts if you need, or head on over to the store and buy what you need, order some stuff. Looks like we got a little cargo access as well. Correct. Tried to have multiple cargo access points so when you're using the base it's not too hard to um, get what you need. 10-4. Just bring the elevator down. Correct. If you want to hop on that, that should take you up to level three in the conference room. Oh yeah, nice little ride up. All it's missing is a little music. <laughs> That'll be up to station personnel to set up if they desire. So we could take the elevator down to level one, but I kind of wanted to take the stairs again. I do have a small maintenance area um, down in between levels again, and a small kind of lounge sitting over here. TV you can sit and watch, sit nice. here, look at some of the ships coming in. Perfect view of the, uh, the dock there. Yep, make sure you don't miss your ship if you're catching up on any of the latest episodes down here. <laughs> and we have um, kind of maintenance area back here for station personnel to access some of the conveyors and other station electronics and other things if needed. Pretty bare bones back here, but... Hey, as long as it gets the job done, right? Yes, sir. So if we head down these stairs, we go down to the level one, which is kind of the um, main hub for the station. On this level, you can access the tower, access the gates, um, head on over to the different docks we have with ships, or head on over to the hangar. Um, but before we head on out of this facility, the only other one we have left is going to be down in the um, reactor room down in the basement. Nice. Ah. So pretty bare bones, but an extra med bay down here, which should be a little bit more protected compared to the one in a control tower and um, control station down here, just in case something happens to everything upstairs. So this is where the nuclear physicist would stay. Correct. If you got one on staff. Yeah, they're hard to come by, right? Uh, seem to be a dime a dozen in space engineers. Everyone's tossing a reactor on a ship. Let's 
see it's got some interior turrets too for uh, those people that like to try to sneak their way in places. Yes, sir. Can't have the base running out of power. So where are we going from the control tower? Well, I think from here, um, since we're going to focus mainly on the base, we can either head on over to the landing docks, my kind of the mining landing pads to um, out through this door, or we can head on over to hangar uh, to you, Commander. Why don't you take us out on the perimeter? All right, um, we're going to exit here. These doors are sensors, so they should just open as you walk towards them, but be careful if I'm closing behind me. All right. All right, and it looks like we got some ships docked out here. Yep, I think uh, I think Geocorp's going to get ready for an attack sometime soon. All right, looks like they're ready. They just need some pilots. So out here we got kind of our secondary dock, mainly designed for um, mining ships. If you have um, PAM ships mining for you, or just extra docks if you need them. Over around towards the back, we got our silos. Yellow is going to be components, or ingots, ingots, yeah. and refined metals. And then we got blue way down at the end for our hydro hydrogen storage. Nice. Plenty of storage on this base. It should never run out of anything. Well, as long as none of the connectors are severed, we're good. But as long as station personnel are paying attention, it'll be good. All right, leaving the landing pads, we're going to head on over to the refinery and assembly room. So, pretty basic setup. A lot of noise nine. going on in here. And here we got nine um, advanced refineries ready to process what you need. Um, some sort of setup. So we got three that are ready to refine stone, iron, um, nickel, and silicon. Um, all with speed modules. Right now, actually, nothing's being refined. It goes through that pretty fast. And we also pour some of our more high-quality materials that we bring in, such as our gold, silver, or platinum. We have three refineries over here, um, all set up with yield modules. Looks like we don't have anything processing at the moment on there. And then for... Um, I had another one set up for, I believe, gold, uranium, cobalt, and magnesium. And then it's actually working on processing it right now. It looks like we got about 31k cobalt being processed and 15k magnesium being processed over this bank of refineries over here. Nice. And, and then to fill up the large number of hydrogen tanks we have in the silos, we have a whole bunch of uh, generators and some assemblers over here. Looks like the base is pretty stocked on hydrogen at the moment. Some nice handrails to keep you away from equipment. And over here, I did actually hide a door. Um, nice. Kind of a secret access. You head in there, there's through an airlock. The other one, and there's actually stairs going down one of the pillars supporting the base. No door at the bottom at the moment, but if you don't mind digging a hole down there, you could find your way up or find your way in. <laughs> so, an emergency exit of sorts. Um, you know, I think the des base design guy got a little bit lazy when I was working on that, and um, the tunnels did not come equipped on this base. All right, uh, as we exit um, this end of the refinery and assembly um, room, kind of come out to a sort of a flight path for our large central hangar over there, which we haven't gotten to yet. And over here we have our garage, but we're going to head across to the, to the garage and see what we have in here. Nice big garage. Looks like it can fit at least four vehicles in here. Uh, depending on the size. Uh, I'm not sure what size vehicles G Corp will be using. But nice big garage. Uh, we could pop open the hangar right here if we want. Yes. 
All these buildings are pressurized, however, the hangars and production facilities and garage only have to, are, are not equipped with airlock, so whenever people open up the doors, we are going to lose all that oxygen. I gotcha. Got a nice ramp over here with a beacon, so for those who get lost easily driving rovers can find their way to the ramp up to the garage. <laughs> Sounds like you know a few people that have done that. I have many times. Uh, yeah. So what we've seen so far of the base, it looks ex absolutely excellent. So uh, what we got next? I think next we're going to head on over to probably the hangar. So we do have a small ship hangar on the base that was requested by G Corp, I believe. Uh, that we're is correct. This. We're going to head in this side entrance over here. This hangar comes equipped with mm, small, four smaller docking bays, or um, labeled one through four on the landing pad. So flight con control can direct them to the correct hangar for whoever's visiting, or you can be directed to the correct hangar. Um, nice. It looks like currently they've got a couple, uh, I guess transport vessels docked up and uh, a couple of fighters ready to exit the uh, the back door there. <laughs> Looks like it. Now in the center we got a slightly larger hangar for the larger ships. Um, still a small ship hangar, but you can pass through when you're look for your larger ships, fuel up and head up, um, keep traffic flowing. And above we have a small either operations area or kind of wide room to be built to order, but nice windows looking down into the hangar, see what chips are going through, and nice solar panels up top with some roof access for maintenance or any repairs that are needed up here. Nice. Always need to be able to access the roof. If you take a look, this base does come equipped with some secondary solar panels for secondary uh, solar panels for secondary power, and um, a small array of defenses. Not a huge amount, but um, I do believe G Corp is not a huge warmongering faction. Well, not at the moment. Although it does look like they are gearing up for something big. Okay, there are some extra conveyor ports up here. <laughs> More turrets are needed. This base is equipped with two external intake vents for in case we're on a low oxygen planet. And those work just by filtering in the air into the actual system, correct? Yeah, just gonna pull an oxygen into the oxygen tanks we have. Nice wide windows, you can see everything. Oh yeah, if you look out this, in front of the hangars there are multiple landing pads. Um, I believe labeled 5 through 8. Um, exterior landing pads kind of run 1 through 8, and then we have interior ones running 1 through 5. Five, six, seven, and 8 are outside. Correct. And then we had one through four over on the uh, kind of secondary dock next to the control tower. But to make sure no one gets confused, I did label the hangars. Hangar bay one, two, three, and four. And I did notice that it is built up off the ground. Is there any specific reason for that? Um... Are you expecting variable terrain for the uh, Geocorp? This is base is somewhat prefabricated. As you notice, lots of the segments are similar. So um, with that in mind, um, this facility could be produced on multiple planets or multiple environments. Um, mainly, it's going to be focused on flatter terrain. Uh, it can work in somewhat sloped terrain, however, um, it can get out of spec in mountainous terrain or due to the large requirement for 
all the support struct beams to intersect the voxels. But did my best. Plus, keeping it off the ground is be um, kind of seems to be more in line with uh, space engineers' design principles on a lot of their uh, bases built in space engineers for more keen software house designs. But that being said, I did attempt to provide plenty of stairway access, so if you do fall off the side of the base and you uh, ran out, run out of hydrogen, you can get back up to um, the main level. I did notice the many, many staircases. Um, with that being said, is there anything else that you'd like to show us about this base? Anything you've got special hidden for uh, maybe just the showcase? Um, there is one last thing that I really want to go through, kind of my second favorite building, um, if the control tower is my first, and that is the living quarters over here. Um, we kind of walked right by it when we left the garage and walked over into the hangar, but um, we have the quarters and barracks here for basic personnel. All right, I'll follow you in. Okay. So this is kind of the lower level for the grunts. Um, many doors for access in and out. Over here we have kind of our mm, locker room style bathroom. As this is where the grunts live. Which can be seen if we come on over here. And we have kind of a barrack style room and common area over here. Ah, I like it. So this would be for lower level personnel. Um, they can relax, sleep, do whatever they need to. Um, they got restrooms on the bottom floor, and then when they head to work, they can just head on over to or either to the hangar or wherever else they need to go. Um, due to the nature of this building, because this building also contains a server room and some other things. We do have secondary power down here and a med bay. Nice. So, with the... I think I've counted three med bays now, and at least four control areas. This base is very redundant. Correct. There's actually going to be four med bays. There was one med bay up in the hangar and above the large, um, the large hangar, hangar five. Ah, okay. But um, coming up here, this is where we're going to have more of our commanding officers or higher level personnel, as these are um, rooms for single individuals and a larger and more more uh, accommodating. Have more amen amenities and accommodations. So each one has their own personal bathroom, a cryo chamber, TV if they need to, information panel. So all these rooms are pretty much a mirror image of each other. Nice. So kind of our four main officers, probably engineering, the commander, flight control, and um, probably some quartermaster or third um, officer will probably have rooms up here and then like I did say this was actually a server room so um, getting lost in here but um, where we came up the stairs if you continue to the other side of the hallway there's additional stairs going up to the server room just put some kind you. of locks programmable locks up here for whatever needed um, of course this space does have room for expansion and redundancy if needed depending on what it's um, any other specifications required by the client? Ten four. And that's pretty much it. Uh, tour of the base. Um, is there any questions you have for me, me, or anything else you wanted to see more of? Well, I'm sure. Uh, I'm sure the viewers and our clients would like uh, a little bit of inspiration from you. Uh, maybe. Tell them a little bit about what made you decide to build the base like this. Okay, well, 
I, um, if you don't already know, this was for a design, design contest, and there were a couple parameters. I was told this was going to be a faction base, and there was a couple things that had to be included in the base. The main one being a control tower, um, a large ship dock, a small ship dock, small ship hangar, and a garage for rovers. Um, additionally, this was going to be a faction base, so in my many years of space engineers, that means there needs to be a produ production area, um, refining area, and cargo access points pretty much all throughout the base, mm, and um, stairs and other things of that nature. Um, then I guess the final requirement was faction colors for this base were going to be white, blue, and gray. Um, so designing this base, I kind of went with more of a industrial or military feel. I was thinking you'd have an air base on a planet, and um, you'd kind of have one personalized building with your quarters or the control tower, and everything else was going to be prefabbed or prefab structures that are all um, built out to order. Um, so you'd have the skeleton built, and then you'd fill them as needed. So like if you notice, most of the um, structures on base are kind of arched hangars, um, and they're uh, almost, I'd say, uh, two blue beam or three blue beams, and then you have the white sections in between them, and um, that's a recurring pattern throughout lots of the base. Um, so if you're thinking they kind of showed up on site, they put a little bit of extra work into the control tower just for engineering and um, what they needed, and then they had a bunch of prefab structures blown in, which they um, uh, kind of just popped up, put together as needed, and they kind of expanded out from there. Um, and then kind of by one of my main design principles in space engineers, engineers um, that I always try to work with is I try to take a lot of inspiration from real life. So if you're going to have a lot of part storage, I'm thinking, why not add some silos in the back, which ended up looking awesome, or I thought looked amazing. Um, actually, in the rover garage, if you notice, there is actually um, somewhat of a service pit. If you're unfamiliar with that, if you're at a uh, oil chain shop or tire repair facility, a lot of times they have um, stairs that go down into a bay that your car, so that you can get underneath the cars and the techs can get underneath the cars to work on the underside of the vehicle. So I built one of those into the service bay. Um, and I feel like that kind of adds a lot of character to the different buildings. A lot of the structures are very similar and um, repeat the images of each other. Uh, but yeah, thank you for um, choosing my base commander. And any other questions? Well, that that ought to be it. Are you uh, are you excited about winning the contest? I am very excited. Um, I was sure there was a lot of stiff competition. I would actually love to see some of the other um, competitors' designs, but um, it's always fun to see get inspiration from what other people are doing and um, get ideas and actually share ideas. And uh, a lot of this design is actually things I picked up through my many years playing space engineers and things that I tried to incorporate that I actually um, see in real life. Like the control tower terminal I kind of modeled after um, a real control tower I would see at an airport. And um, the curved designs for a lot of the hangers are a lot of prefab hangers that I've seen um, with the pop-up walls and kind of the curved and arches. So. All, right. All right. I got you. Um, and I'd like to add, guys, um, I want to thank Mars for his submission to the contest and all the guys out there that did compete and were not chosen as the winner. I want to wish you better luck next time. And uh, don't get discouraged by it. As you can see, Mars One built a fantastic base. Um, also, if you do submit your work to the workshop, make sure that you put Fat Squatch Contest entry into the description. That way, when people do subscribe to your design, they know that you entered that design into the contest. Now, there was plenty of competition out there for Mars. But as you can see by the base and by the way he took us around the base and introduced us to this base design, he deserves the win. So guys, I want to thank you for watching. 
And as always, like, comment, subscribe. Reach for the stars, guys.